It is Easter Day. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship God. Our opening praise, the Easter hymn. Good morning, friends. <laughs> and uh, a very, very happy Easter to each and to all of you. It is good to be back here uh, worshipping with you in person uh, today. I've not been away. I've been worshipping with you uh, on the uh, online service every week. Uh, but the trouble with the online service is that you only get to see folks from about the middle forward. Uh, so all of you in the side aisles and at the back, uh, I'm particularly uh, happy to see you guys uh, today. Let's begin uh, by joining together in prayer. Let's pray. Creator God, God of new beginnings, with joy and praise, with awe and wonder, with gladness and celebration, we bring you our Easter Sunday worship. We lift up our hearts, we lift up our thoughts, we lift up our very souls, recognizing afresh all that you have done for us. In Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. We rejoice in the message of this Easter day. 
in the good news at the very heart of our faith. That message of light after darkness, joy after sorrow, good after evil, life and life in all its fullness. Creator God, God of new beginnings, speak to us again today. Speak to us through all that we read, through all that we hear, through all that we sing, and indeed through all that we share and do, both here in church and later at home. May the truth of the resurrection inspire us with new hope, May the victory of Jesus fill us with fresh joy. May the reality of his presence with us this Easter Sunday and always fill us with emboldened faith. May his forgiving love that flows through the cross and through the empty tomb, may that forgiving love fill us with renewed grace towards one another and all. And so may we serve you, creator God, God of new beginnings, with a new vigor to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And creator God, God of new beginnings, hear us as we all now say together as one that family prayer that Christ, our risen Lord, has taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have three readings today and I'm doing the, the first of these readings. Uh, two of the readings come from the Easter story as found in St. John's Gospel. And in the middle there is a, a reading from the Old Testament book of Psalms. So first of all, from St. John, chapter 20, and the first 18 verses. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. Peter bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. But he did not go in. So it's John went in and saw the linen wrappings but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. Not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also then went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their, home, quote, their houses. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, 
Why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said all of these things to her. Amen. As we continue the Easter story, we sing together now the hymn, 411. Jesus, the Lord is risen today. Let us worship. May I also add my word of welcome to everyone, whether you're here in church or joining us elsewhere. As always, you're made very welcome indeed, and no more welcome than to see our minister back with us. Intimations are printed for you, and we commend them all to you. Uh, couple of things just to point up. 
First of all, concerning number four, Hazel Shaw's ordination. Friday the 19th of April at 7 p.m. in St. George's Parish Church in Paisley. We're looking to organizing a bus from St. Mary's which would leave around 5.30. However, we do not have the requisite numbers uh, at this stage. We really need to have, I think, 40 before it becomes viable. I think at this stage, there's something like a dozen or so folks have indicated that they would like to go. Um, we're going to ask you if you could, if you're still interested, you would really like to go, give your name into the church office by Sunday the 7th. If we can't put together the requisite number for a bus, we will then organize various cars and we shall have a little convoy, but we will be there for definite. So remind you of that. And the other thing is just a little reminder to you that today is technically and actually, and she says forever, Margaret's last day as our church secretary after 22 years. So Margaret, wonderful, thank you. Um, at some later date, there'll be an appropriate commemoration and thanksgiving. That's all I've been told to say, <laughs> other than to <coughs> ensure that Margaret knows that we are all deeply, deeply appreciative of all that she has done as the church secretary. And to remind you, that post is vacant and it requires filling as soon as possible. If you're even remotely interested, contact the session clerks immediately, please. And Bryce has got uh, one other thing that he wishes to share with you before we move on to read the rest of the lessons. Thanks, John. Uh, and yes, Margaret, I'd just like to say thank you for uh, the time that you've been secretary uh, with me. It's been greatly, greatly appreciated and I look forward to celebrating in the, the days to, to come. And yeah, we do uh, need a, a secretary. Uh, a church this big uh, needs a, a secretary to function well. And could I just, uh, uh, on behalf of myself, being selfish as, as minister, but on half, behalf of all of us as a congregation, uh, just say, if you've got a wee inkling uh, and would like to uh, find out more about being secretary or what it might mean, uh, if you'd like to, to just take that wee step and even give it a try, uh, we would be very, very happy to hear from you. It's such a, an important congregational job. Uh, the only wee thing I was going to add to, to what John said is that uh, after having been off for so long, what you do is you come back on a phased return basis. So over the next six weeks, uh, I'm allowed to do more things uh, each week and they've been laid out for me and uh, I'll probably uh, each week maybe just print in the order of service some of the, the new things that I'll be doing uh, and taking on but uh, just to say this week it's uh, getting my feet under the table again uh, and uh, just uh, catching up uh, with my session clerks finding out how things are, are going and also uh, looking forward to the future and of course uh, sharing with John today which is a great privilege I thank John so much for all that he's done during my time uh, uh, off and uh, John you've been a real star thank you so so much and next week I have the privilege of sharing uh, with Arthur in the service and uh, I will look forward to that so much as well they have been a, a brilliant twosome and uh, I can tell them that straight from my mum, uh, who watches the service. Each week we'll be watching now and uh, just tells me how great uh, John and, and Arthur are. So that's, my mum will be looking forward to your sermon today, John. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so just finding my feet this week and uh, preparing for for next Sunday. Uh, I'd like to just pass over now to my good wife, Helen, who's going to lead us in our next readings. Good morning and happy Easter to all. 
Um, the reading is from Psalm 113, 1 to 8. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and on the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. The choir will now sing the anthem, Risen on High. Continuing on with Bryce's uh, reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Amen, and thanks be to God for his word.
Thank you. Love changes everything. John's Gospel tells us, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. In the musical aspects of love, there is the famous song, Love Changes Everything. In the second verse, there's a profound statement. Love will turn your world around. That world will last forever. Yes, love, love changes everything. Brings you glory, brings you shame. Nothing in the world will ever be the same. This was surely what Mary Magdala had discovered when she became a follower of Jesus. I don't think anyone loved Jesus so much as Mary did. And there's a lot of speculation as to what sort of person Mary had been before she met Jesus. Tradition has always been that she was a scarlet woman. But that's not what the Gospels tell us. We're told Jesus cast out seven demons or spirits from Mary. And modern thinking would perceive that this woman was a troubled soul. I think she was someone who had serious mental health problems. And we need to remember that at the time of Jesus, all illness, physical, mental, was put down to the person or their parents having sinned or that the person was possessed by demons or evil spirits. Whatever Mary's situation was, it's clear that Jesus had done for her what no one else could do. He changed her life for the better. And for the rest of her days, Mary loved Jesus. And I'm sure we've all had someone, not within our family perhaps, whom we've absolutely, as they say, loved to bits. For Mary, that love of Jesus had changed everything, turned her world around, brought her glory where once she only had shame, and nothing for her, nothing at all in the world would ever be the same. It was the healing love of Jesus that had changed everything for Mary. And all she had to offer her crucified Lord was love. So she was at the tomb. It was the only place for her to go and she couldn't stay away. But when Mary arrives at the tomb, she is shocked to find that the stone is rolled away. And instinctively, she races away to get Peter and John to tell them this shocking news. They've taken away the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. I think the fact that Mary sought out Peter is very revealing. Despite all the chaos of the betrayal, trial and execution of Jesus, and Peter's terrible denial of his Lord in the courtyard of the high priest's house, it seems that Peter is still seen as the leader of the group. So off they set, running to the tomb, and John, almost certainly a much younger man, arrived first. He looked in, he saw the linen cloths, but he didn't go in. It was the ever impetuous Peter who went in, and perhaps that was what gave John courage to go in as well. And it's at this point that John believed that Jesus was truly who he said he was. With his own eyes, this disciple who always signed himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved, he saw and believed. Jesus had risen just as he had said he would. And of course, we know that for Peter, there later comes the excruciating time on the beach when Jesus asks him, you know, Simon, son of Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Three times the question. 
And each time they reply, of course, Lord, you know that I love you. And Peter is tasked with feeding the flock, being the shepherd, the leader, the protector. So in the courtyard of the high priest's house, Peter's world is in tatters. And at the empty tomb and on a lakeside beach, love turned Peter's world around. As with Mary, so with Peter. The love of Jesus brought him glory where once he had shame. And nothing in the world would ever be the same for him. As we read the Easter story, we come to realize that the part played by love is extraordinary. Mary, who loved Jesus so much, was first at the tomb. She's then the first to see the risen Christ and the first to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved and who loved Jesus, was the first to believe in the resurrection. Peter, broken and shamed by his denial of his Lord, is the first to be given the responsibility of leading and caring for the disciples. And then comes the wonderful moment when Jesus appears to the gathered and still fearful disciples, most likely in the upper room where the Last Supper was held, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. No wonder they rejoiced. They realized that the world had been turned around and would never be the same again because love, the love of Jesus, had changed everything. There's a story about a French painter and illustrator and printmaker and sculptor called Gustave Doré. He was renowned for his wood engravings. He lived from 1832 to 1883. And his portfolio included illustrations for such renowned names as Lord Byron, Cervantes, Balzac, Edgar Allan Poe, Rabelais, Milton, and very significantly, Dante's Divine Comedy and the French translation of St. Jerome's Latin Bible. He had all these wonderful illustrations. And the story is that a young artist brought to Dory a painting that this young man had just finished of Jesus seeking Dory's verdict. And after a while, Dory said very simply and succinctly, you don't love him or you would paint him better. If we love Jesus, as he loves us, then the message of Easter resounds around the world that nothing in the world will ever be the same because this man, Jesus of Nazareth, Christ the Redeemer, his love, his love has changed everything. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord and we too rejoice when we proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us now sing the hymn, Now the Green Blade Riseth. We'll remain seated to sing it, and whilst we're singing, the offering will be uplifted.
let us pray. There is no greater gift we can receive, Heavenly Father, than the joy and wonder that is Easter Day. The stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty, and the crucified Jesus is the risen Christ. As we acknowledge your love for us, so we ask you to receive these gifts laid upon the holy table, tokens of our gratitude, our commitment to discipleship, and our love. Living Lord Jesus, conqueror of death, we remember with gladness how on the day of your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples in your risen power and said to them, peace be with you. How desperately we need that word to be spoken today. When turmoil, fear, violence, and hatred consume our world and impinge upon human life. Give to us, we pray, the faith that overcomes fear, replacing it with inner calm. Give to us, we pray, the hope that looks beyond the immediacy of present tensions, providing instead a firm grasp of things unseen and eternal. Give to us, we pray, the love that binds us ever closer to one another and to you, our risen Lord. To the leaders of the nations, bring compassion, trust, integrity, and a determination to establish and maintain peace and justice for all people. To the refugees, the displaced, the oppressed, and the hungry, bring a reassurance that people of all faiths and none are determined to bring about change for the better. To the lonely, the lost, and the outcast, bring a promise of friendship, guidance, and acceptance. To the ill, the dying, the bereaved, bring healing, assurance, and comfort. Heavenly Father, the message we bring to all is that through the resurrection, Christ has broken the power of death, has set in motion in the world a force for good through his church, has promised that for us in the fullness of time, there is the gift of life immortal in the glory of your presence. So thanking you this day for all that we enjoy for goodness and love, for healing and hope. May we all face whatever the future holds in store for us, unafraid and calm and trusting in you, confident that nothing in all creation can ever separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our risen Lord, Amen. To close our worship, hymn 419, Thine be the glory.
My friends in Christ, I place you into God's loving care. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this Easter day and always. Thank you.